So what does that mean? And what, what have we kind of come to? So if we kind of summarize where we've come to for now, and we try and characterize, well, what is this, this stream that comes from <coughs> India <coughs> to Greece? And there kind of has this kind of arrival. We can, we can in a very simple way, say that it's this, this coming into being of the individual who then can stand in the world and gradually relate to the world out of his or her own soul nature. So it's like the personhood goes through this remarkable process of kind of suddenly standing on the earth, living in a body, and relating to the world. And we could characterize that as a certain, the arrival of a certain kind of freedom. Now, it's just, in Greece, it's just the very beginning of that experience. Because I think any of us who look at our grandparents, <coughs> or even at our parents, would say that for them, and maybe even for us as well, that we still have a sense of gaining our sense of self from the outside. So we still define ourselves by uh, what race we belong to, what language we speak, what church we belong to, what association we belong to, what profession we have. So these are still, these are still the last traces of this process where the human being is given shape or form from the outside, or what we can call the old law. And what then Jesus pointed to as we need to now really become inwardly creative in a new way. Because if we don't, then that which comes as this possibility for freedom actually becomes imprisonment. And I become isolated, I become alienated, I become cut off. I actually die also in my soul, in my spirit. And the only way I can begin to overcome that is I have to now wake up new forces in myself. And I have to decide what I'm going to do with that freedom. And I think if we look at our culture, we can begin to get a sense of how humanity in general is trying to answer that challenge. And what we observe it, we can begin to kind of recognize that there are these, these impulses to maintain my own presence, but also find a new way of connecting with another person. And that sense of how do I cultivate capacities that protect my freedom, but also allows me to overcome the hardening tendency of that freedom and come into a new relationship with others. And this actually goes back, again, to the Buddha and this, this bringing in of this <laughs> impulse of compassion, which then is really um, brought to a, 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 a focus with what uh, Jesus Christ brought as this very simple gesture. Well, what is, what's the new law? This question. I'm not here to talk about the old law, I'm here to talk about the new law. And then he gives all these examples, and these little stories. And at the core of each of these parables is, what does the person in their freedom do? What do they do in relationship to the other person? Yeah. <clears throat> when you have the woman who's being stoned, what are you gonna do? Yes, there are all these old laws that tell you what you're supposed to do, but what about this person? Consider this person, right? And that's, that's this example that we're given, that, that we can now start a new process. Now we try and characterize that process. Can anybody, if, if we think of then this, this kind of um, forming process that's there 
right up and then becomes kind of hardened with the Roman, can we get a sense of what this new impulse does to that form? What begins to happen? It expands, yeah. Pardon? A rich inner life? Well, mm -hmm. well and what it does is it certainly what begins to then um, develop and cultivate and become more and more active is this inner life. So there's a kind of inner activity that then, that then out of its own kind of impulse begins <laughs> to want to become <coughs> active with the inner life of the other person. So what is, we could say, Earthed tries to lift itself into, into mobility. It tries to become, we could say, more fluid. Yeah. More fluid? More fluid. So it's more like a kind of watery element or more kind of active, fluid like element. Yeah. If I stay isolated in myself, I'm, I'm safe. I don't have to do anything. So if I, if I, if I want to kind of reach out and come into relationship to you, then I have to kind of be very sensitive to where you are, what mood you are, how you're reacting. Um, there's this kind of dance that begins to happen, which is which is this exercising of your soul and my soul. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get you to sense is that in order to begin to address the kind of shadow side or the darkness of this gift of our own inner life. We have to become active and we have to we have to we have to begin to try and form links or form connections. If we don't do that, then we stay isolated and we die. Okay, so if we go on. Um, okay, so I'm so the whole Christian impulse, we can say, is related to this cultivation of the inner life. <clears throat> so suddenly you have architecture, which was completely exterior in India, and gradually developed inner spaces. But even as late as, each, as uh, Greece and Rome, is still an outer form. Yeah. Then really overnight, in about the year 300, when Christianity became the official religion of Rome, all of a sudden you had a concern for inner space. Yeah? And you had the development of what was a law court in Rome becoming the basilica form. If we just go to the next one, I'm trying to speed it up here. <laughs> so this is a very early basilica form. And I just want you to notice here <clears throat> that you basically have a wall, and you have a wall, and you have a roof. So you have a very simple structure where you have one line of support here, and you have one line of support here, and then you have beams going across it. Okay, got the picture? Mm -hmm. But there's this longing to somehow wake up this, this experience in my environment that reflects this inner this awakening of a soul life. So there's this impulse to actually punch holes in these walls. Right? <laughs> so you start, you start kind of trying to create windows to let this experience of light into this inner space. So you have about a thousand years where there's this attempt, this whole period, this attempt, well, not, that's about 700 years, <clears throat> of trying to cut more and more of the substance away in order to let the light in. And of course, you can only take so much substance away until, until it doesn't work anymore, right? <clears throat> but the remarkable thing is about the Romanesque architecture is that if you imagine, say, that this column gets knocked out, right? <clears throat> Just right. What happens to the rest of the structure? <coughs> It's okay. Pardon? It's okay. It's basically okay. I mean, you might get a little bit of collapse here, <laughs> but basically the rest of it, it's, it's okay. fine. Right? So really, <clears throat> what happens to this column 
has a little bit of, a, of a, uh, an effect on the adjacent parts of the structure. They're working together to create a space, but they're not that dependent upon each other. And then you come to this quite remarkable period. That's just another picture, again, of this effort. This, this complete leap in, in how human beings were able to imagine space. And that is what happened in the year 1000 with Abbot Suger, who woke up at Saint-Denis in Paris, and he, and he suddenly had this picture. Oh. We don't have to have walls that carry weight in that way anymore. I can completely change how I organize structure, and it becomes completely open. Whoa. And so what Emily says is, I don't have to have my arches run along these lines. So if this is, if this is a Romanesque church, this would be a wall with an arch in it, an arch in it, an arch in it. What Abbot Sushi <coughs> saw was, no, I can take that arch, and I can turn it like that. And I can take that arch, and I can turn it like that. And I can do the arch like that, like that, like that, like that. <laughs> so I can, Christmas. I can take what was on a line, and I can make Cross. it a three-dimensional wow. matrix. Right? So if we go to the next picture. <laughs> and so, so now you have structure that isn't dependent upon a wall. But you have structure, which is this, this series of interconnected elements. Yeah. These thin arches that now become a three-dimensional fabric. And, and, I, and to grasp the ability to form that thought is boggling when you actually get it. Wow, that, how did that happen? How do you do that? Right? Now I ask the same question. What happens if you take this out? <clears throat> Fine. Hmm? It's fine, right? The whole structure falls. Yes. Oh, what, what, what do you think of? If you take one column out now, yeah. oh, really? the oh, whole wow. thing falls down. Yeah. Right? And actually, when I teach the course, we, we actually do that with our bodies. We actually build a, 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 a Romanesque temple, yeah, or a Romanesque church, and then we build a Gothic cathedral. And the only way the Gothic cathedral it works is that every element pushes against all the other elements. Yeah. And so it can't, it can't be in itself. It has to be in the other elements. Right? And if you take any piece away, the whole thing falls. Everything falls. Right? And so there's this built into the environment of the Gothic cathedrals. There's this experience that, as an individual, I only have my meaning. I only have my, I only have my purpose in this complete trust and relationship with the community. Right? And that was a remarkable discovery that then was carried by the lodges for about 200, 300 years, and then the lodges were wiped out. Right? So in other words, that, that knowledge of the significance of this awareness was basically destroyed by forces that didn't want human beings to have this experience. And so then we have these two streams. You have a stream that becomes hidden, and you have the outer stream that where it surrounds us in our world today, where, these, where the forces to materialize the human body using this Roman way of seeing the world become stronger and stronger and stronger until we're now living in these bodies that are built up out of these Roman forces. And there's this impulse to want to change our relationship to our world and to our experience of self. 